we've come up to uplift baby. My view is that you cannot uplift. She's done nothing wrong. I'm going to ask you both just to leave. No, we don't trust them. How can I help you? Um, is that an order there to uplift him? And that's what we're enforcing. Around to your baby. <clears throat> They're trying to make you give baby away. Don't hand your baby over to them. So this is just a complete fiasco. They're coming back. Yeah. Three Māori babies a week are being uplifted like this and um, this has to stop. The taking of Māori babies from their mothers is a crisis in hiding. Māori women have a right to be frightened. This is not humane, it's not right. How can we in New Zealand be treating people like this? For two years now, Newsroom has been looking into how children are being uplifted by the state. Affected parents say it is brutal, traumatising and often unnecessary. And it's behind closed doors these uplifts take place. Kia ora. Kia ora. I'll just pull in here. Yeah, Re Peko Ormsby is a midwife of the mother whose baby is going to be uplifted by Oranga Tamariki. Oranga Tamariki, of course, is SIFS rebranded with a Māori name. It is the second time the young mother has lost a baby. Her first baby was also uplifted from this hospital. The law prevents us from showing anyone that leads to the identity of the baby. So that includes the mother, the two grandmothers, and the baby's father and extended whanau. Can you go through what's gone on? I thought I was going to um, take him home, but they come to take him to another person's home, to caregivers. And what did that make you feel like? The order to uplift the baby was granted after Oranga Tamariki told the family court that there are domestic violence issues, lack of parenting skills, transient home environments and heavy marijuana use by the father. Some of these claims are disputed by the family, but this story is not about whether the uplift is warranted, but about the uplift process. Tare. It just seems... Um, She's the perfect victim, Melanie. She doesn't speak. She's so traumatised. Jean Tahuya is the CEO of Namaya Māori Midwives, Aotearoa. When she tells the story of her first baby and how they stole it from her, it's unbelievable. She had a difficult labour. She ended up having an emergency caesarean section. Her partner was with her the entire time. He went home in the morning to have a shower and while she was alone in the room someone came in the room and said to her we need to check your baby and pushed the baby out of the room here in this hospital. An hour or so later she asked where is my baby? What's happened to my baby? And she was then informed that the baby had been uplifted by Oranga Tamariki. After the uplift of the mum's first baby, the whānau believed that the support systems put in place by these midwives was wrapped so tightly around the young mum, the uplift of her second baby was unlikely. Did you think if you did all the right things you'd be able to keep your baby? That's what they said. If you did all the right things you could keep your baby? Uh, I'm and I'm the social worker involved in 
this I'm standing in for Jadine mm -hmm. Heatherwick, who's on leave. Mm -hmm. She was due to be back today, but unfortunately... Jadine is the young mum's social tomorrow. worker. So um, we've come up to execute a warrant to uplift baby. Okay, so before you execute that warrant, this is from our lawyer, Janet. She's Unlike almost all Māori mothers in this situation, a lawyer, Janet Mason from Wellington, was on hand after the two midwives got wind of the uplift. So she's asked that we tell you that a notice has been put in that you cannot take this child. Documents have been filed in the Hastings Family Court. We have also written to the Minister, Tracy Martin, and the Prime Minister. So a Outside the room, police here to assist with the removal of the baby. We've, we're not going we've to got the anybody. warrant. We've got the warrant. We have the warrant. <coughs> and we would like everyone that's no, not family sorry. to remove it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay, we're, asking. we're just going to ring Janet. Now, you've got, you got a thing on your phone? Okay, yep. Because oh, I'll ring on my phone you. otherwise. Oh, I mean. I've got papers here. One for... Um, At this point in time, the three social workers are not aware that Newsroom is covering the story. Everything you are seeing here is being filmed by Fano on their phones. Can I have the top page, please? What's that for? That's just... So that's that you know that you've got a copy, that's from the court to say that the child is in now our custody. Um, no, he's not. not. Yes, he and is. The, and the reasons why. That gives that document need to tell you why. all the reasons why. Yeah. Okay. So we've got, we've <coughs> met with the staff here and we've got a bit of the plan. Mm -hmm. um, just until Jadine gets back. Okay. There was a plan set up Hello. before she had Hello, baby. Janet, this is and she was meant Hello, to go Janet. to the party. Janet, yeah, this is Rebecca Ormsby yeah. midwife. Oranga Tamariki have presented themselves with a court order to take baby I've got you on loudspeaker. Great, thank you. Um, now I just want to advise you that we have urgently filed an application to, uh, for, to stay the enforcement of the order that you've got and to receive the decision. So who's the order going to be in then? Who, who is the order in the favour of? Because for us to give away a custody order, you need to tell me who is the recipient of the custody order that you're filing in court. It's not a custody order. It is an application to basically... So we already have the order. The order that you've got. But we already have the order. I don't understand how you can stop an order yes, that's okay, already maybe, been made okay, by the can, court. Can you just, maybe, maybe if you listened, you uh, might no. have... No. Hey, Janet. she have a right to right. speak? Oh, she no, has a right to speak. Hang on, this is hang on, Janet. Janet, this is Monica. So, sorry. This should yeah, be. Yeah, sorry. Can I, just, can I just explain? Yeah, you what can explain. It is, it is an application yep. under Rule 34 yep. of the Family Court Rule to put in an injunction from Oranga Tamariki enforcing the order that you've got because we are applying to rescind that order, right? And now that you have been given notice, I would strongly urge you to get legal advice on what you're doing my view is that you cannot uplift now that you know that we've filed for this urgent injunction on what you're doing there's not been any lack of communication so on our way. side we have been waiting for all this time for the file and i have to say that the things that we are alleging in our application, which will be followed up mm. by affidavit evidence, mm. are that there are no grounds for you to remove this child. We have written to the Prime Minister saying the very act of your going there and trying to remove this baby is in itself endangering the interests of the child. It is your actions, not the actions of the mother or the midwife or anything else. But we can only follow our process yep, yep. and, um, you know, uh, we believe that, that the child is in need of care and protection. Can I go through the plan that we had written? 
here. No, we don't. Because well, we've, 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 we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. it. Okay, that's fine. I'll been through enough. We've been through enough. Can I just say, if it involves any kind of taking of that child, then we just don't want to hear it. Because that's what the court action is about. Okay, my colleagues have just gone out to talk for the to the, our lawyers, so I will go out and join them, and I'll come back once I've got an answer. Okay, thank, thank you, Fano. Don't forget your car seat. Bye. No, I'll leave it there for a moment. No, he's already got one. Baby, now. Oh, Janet's gone. Sorry, Janet. Can I just have a chat with you guys? But yeah. one of you guys has a phone number. Can oh. I not be um, put on cell phone? Like, why? Can I ask why? Well, because I just wanted to have a talk with you around what the plan was. What you guys oh, we don't mind if they What you are about to hear a lot is what's referred to as the plan. That's the care right. plan instructions no, for mother and baby no, once the baby sure. is born. Yeah, no, no, so I just, I just wanted to explain who I am. So my name's Tash and um, I'm the hospital police liaison for Oranga Tamariki. So I work for Oranga Tamariki. So my main role is that I work in the hospital and some of it really is about making sure that we get it right. But the reason I've asked to talk to you guys is what was your guys' understanding of the plan moving forward? Jodie has set up that she'd go into Yeah. And that's where she's been staying before yeah. she had baby and when she has baby she was going back there to stay. The Fano all believed mother and baby were going to a support house for young Māori mothers, whose supervisor is Oranga Tamariki certified. You'll hear it referred to as the Fari or Te Fari. Is that your understanding, Bill? Is that what was happening? Yeah. That's what I really wanted to know. I just wanted to know. Because part of my role, so I'm also a practice leader, mm. so part of my role is just making sure that we're doing the right things at the right time. That's why we're a bit shocked that they want to take baby and say, yeah, he doesn't have a safe environment when they do. Yeah. So have you read the documents? And I only say that, guys, because everything that you need to know about why we've made the decisions are in those documents. The court documents, remember, have only just been delivered. While we told one thing, and and we do what we've to been told to do, and then they don't change it straight away like that. So Jaden was mean? aware of the there plan. Were, yeah, there was already a plan. Set. There was already Can a plan. Yeah, yeah. When did you know this order was? Um, Thing. Because you're the liaison yeah, officer, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you so, say you're liaison, you could have come in yeah, earlier. Uh, no, so it, it's really difficult for 78 because 78 is something that we apply for and we pretty much enforce on the same day. So I do just need to take this, give me five, six guys. What I want to know, because I've been hearing different stories, is you guys had a plan already in place. That was about um, five weeks ago. All of us at that meeting had had put together a plan to support her at the Fare. Right. And so we had asked, and we have continued to ask, we are doing, and has done, everything she can that's been asked of her. Yeah. And so it was our understanding that that's what was happening. Because mm. she's yeah. been staying at the whare yeah. before baby was born. born. Yeah. Mm. That was the plan, to go there before baby was born, stay there when she said baby, go back and as a family we all take shifts to stay and help her out. Right. So it went to the multidisciplinary team. We also referred her to the Family Start program. Mm. Um, has done with our course. Um, and so, you know, that's the background service that we have been in place. And we did ask in my referral, the first report, I asked what else is required from Tamariki, all on the Tamariki, for to do because she wants to keep this baby. So for a while there, it seemed, the Fano were experiencing a bit of understanding, maybe even making a bit of headway. 
But, yeah. That feeling didn't last long. So what is the, but the plan is what we can do, we can still uplift. Even so our lawyer, our lawyer has advised yeah, you against They have them? been in touch with us, so that's our... But so I just want to clear up something. I didn't know about this other meeting that the Whanau had, and we didn't know about the plan. Okay. So are you stating that you are now going to uplift the baby? Mm. Right now. Even though you've spoken to our lawyer? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Rebecca gets straight back onto the lawyer. We've just been informed um, by Orana Tamariki um, that they will be uplifting baby. Right, now she, I just sent an email to their lawyer. What their lawyer has told me is that mm -hmm. they will uplift and take the baby to Te Pare, where she's staying. Um, they're saying that the mother can be joined with the baby at the house. I've emailed her back just now saying, why can't she go with the baby to Te Pare and with you there um, beside her? And I'm sure she wouldn't mind if the Oranga Tamariki case worker went together with all of you. Doesn't trust them to be delivering her baby to Fari and does not want to be separated from her baby at I all. Know. Yeah, and this mm. is truly just a, a very distressing moment for her. So we are going to take baby with us and she'll be placed with <coughs> a keg, oh sorry, a he. Um, he'll be placed with um, another an oranga tamariki caregiver. So oh, baby the is the not going to the whare? No. You heard right. After all that, baby is now going to be uplifted, taken off the mum and given to an oranga tamariki caregiver. Oranga tamariki uh, presenting now advising that they will be uplifting baby and baby will not be going to te whare. Baby will be going to another oranga tamariki caregiver. In my email, Again, the lawyer. I have got an email from their lawyers telling me otherwise. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, hi, 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 hi. Sorry. You be quiet. Wait, hi, hi, hi. Send it, send it me. Right. The email that I have says that uh, the baby will be taken to Te Whare and that the mother will be joining the baby. Oh, right? Yes. And they will be there together. So... I have gone back to them and I have said, if they're going to go there, why can't they go accompanied by you and the midwife together mm -hmm. instead of all this distress? Okay, so I'll look. send you that correspondence. Yeah, that would be great. Because that's not okay, the that's right. not where you've got. Right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Again, the uplift is averted. Oh, that was a very drama. But it just shows the like manner in which they work. It's not long before the social workers are back, but this time they say no filming. We'll talk to one of the, her mother outside if that's okay. No, no she's not are, going anywhere. Need, you, need you need to, to be straight oh, up. We've got nothing to hide from Well, we've yeah. got nothing to hide okay. either, but well, just, I just don't want to report just tell on, us what, on what, what the Because what is. happens is that you fellas have a plan, yep. and then the family get told what the plan is, and so we all believe it. And as the midwives, I'm the midwife too, know, the I'm plan changes, midwife. the plan <coughs> changes, the and then people... Oranga Tamariki <coughs> and the child, okay? Well, actually, it's not, because yes, whānau yes, centred is. is about is. Yes, whānau, it is. it's about the, the mother. The child is actually in our care, okay? And if you just listen, and I ask you to turn that off, mm. and I think the news that I've got is going to be positive, Well, so then you would want that recorded no, then, wouldn't I don't, you? No, we don't no. want that. Okay, don't want I'd rather that. have it on, because if no. you're going to... All right, then I'll turn it off. So we, and everyone looked at each other and then we turned them off and, um, and then she said, well, the plan is the, um, and the baby can stay together. Um, so she says, okay, the, um, the midwife, you the midwife, you can take and the baby down to um, 
that and um, and while she was in the process was saying that with the oh okay that sounds pretty right the lawyer rang our lawyer rang um, Janet advising that the lawyer for Oranga Tamariki has put in a second application to the court advising that Oranga Tamariki have already uplifted, uplifted the, the baby, baby. And, yep. and that was yep. like what? what? We were like, yeah. we were like, we were Confused. like, couldn't believe it. We were like, yeah. no way. No, this is not no trustworthy. Way. We, we ain't, yeah. you know, we're not going. You're not going anywhere. We're not believing you. Yeah. So why did Oranga Tamariki tell the judge that the baby had been uplifted when clearly it hadn't? Was some sort of trap being laid? A decision was made not to risk leaving the hospital. I felt uh, a feeling of sickness come over me and, and that was a feeling of hopelessness yeah. because I felt yeah. what there's no hope for yeah. our there's no hope for our mums. Yes. There's no hope for our fam families mm. if this is what they have to put up with. Yes. Mm. Everyone knew another day would bring another battle. No one more than midwife Jean Tahuya, she's seen it over and over. We are always trying to defend a mother or a partner. You know, they, they have already become victims of, of circumstance. You know, both of these kids have grown, grown up in homes of family violence. Family violence is the issue here. This young girl has had a baby and she's done nothing wrong. By association, she's, they're saying, she's not fit to be a mother. So have you ever been in trouble in the courts? No. No. Have you been on drugs? No. So when, when mainstream New Zealand think about you taking, them taking a baby, we think yeah. the baby's in danger, the mother's off her head, yeah. there's the alcohol fetal yeah. syndrome, yeah. Uh, drugs, yeah. risk, whatever. So, so again, you've just proved that these kids have no strength to negotiate their own needs. They have no voice. What would have happened yesterday if you and Rebecca hadn't been here? They would have taken the baby. They would have walked in here like they did and would have taken this baby. And so what we're saying is the system is crook. This, these, neither of them have had an opportunity to defend themselves against the allegations that have been, been um, laid against them by one caseworker. And nobody else has had an input into that into that judge's uh, into that letter that goes between before the judge. When I read that, I myself as a judge would have said, "Hell no, they they're not having this baby." When I read what was written on that piece of paper, most of it wasn't true. So you're telling me that there's these rafts of allegations against <laughs> and against the dad. Yeah, and you aren't in a position to be able to defend whether they're accurate, yep. true, yep. reasonable, yep. fair yep. or otherwise. No, we're not. Until they come take and take, take the, the baby. baby. And, and not, that it's yeah. only then that yeah. you can say, see well, what they're saying. Exactly. It's only then that we can say, this boy obviously needs support. Until yesterday, he didn't even know that he needed his own lawyer. So nobody has given either of them. Look, it's it's not fair and it doesn't so can they guarantee the safety of this baby if they take it off you no they can't they can't because all indications are this baby's either going to end up in a mental institute or as a nine-year-old last year first the youngest ever suicide victim in new zealand nine years of age was a ward of the state so what have we got? What's the alternative to what the state proposes for these two babies? This baby and, her si and his older sister. They can't guarantee nothing. We have to take a stand. As parents, as grandparents, we cannot allow this to continue. We can't. Yeah. Good morning. Hi. I'm with the comms team at the DHB. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> So, you're media? I am, yeah. yeah. Right. You're obviously aware of 
the protocols around letting a DHB knowing. Protocol is a word used a lot by the DHB. Um, well, they can't that film, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, well, this is off the record, just a discussion between us. Turns out I had broken protocol by not seeking permission from the DHB to film the uplift of a newborn baby. From experience, I knew that gaining permission would have been unlikely. That's fine, thank you very much. I apologised. You got the, good and well and truly told off here. And that would be the first of many. After yesterday's debacle, a family group conference was set up for today with the mother's caseworker who had just returned from holiday. We've organised a room for Fano to have the meeting. So the DHB have said, yes, we will find you a room. Oranga Tamariki want to have the meeting at a venue 10 minutes drive from the hospital. No one can understand why the meeting can't be here, which would mean the baby's mother and father could attend. We don't want to take her out and cart her all the way over there. But Jadine, the lead caseworker, isn't budging. Um, she said, that's all right, she can stay and they'll have her on speakerphone at the meeting over there, but they, she will not, ha they won't have it here. They I can't. should be at the meeting though, not Yeah, on the you phone. should be at the meeting. Yeah. Everybody is here, the whānau are all here. So the whole thing is, it is quite, it's really unfair. By now, the hospital Komatua has arrived. She too tries to assist with changing the meeting to be at the hospital. But then, in the midst of it all, DHB's head of security turns up. Look, I'm I'm here with the Fano. Okay, so I'm going to well, ask you both just to leave. That's uh, it. Okay, but can I just have a conversation with you, please? No, it's no, that's the decision. No, because I'll tell you what, the, you, the whānau want me here, the kaumātua of the hospital want, want me here, and if Oranga Tamariki been, don't want me here, then they can deal with it. It's not up to the hospital to deal with it. I respect all the family and their wishes, but yeah. for me in the hospital, yeah. while this process is just going on, there's a request for yourself and your cameraman. By who? By me. So just the vacate. Right, so now it's by you, or is it by, by Oranga Tamariki? It's by the DHB. So before you just said it was about Oranga Tamariki didn't want me here? Just leave, please. No. Because I don't want anything to get the police in. Okay, which so, right world? So look, let, let, let me just tell you this. Hot on the security manager's heels, hospital PR, who by now seems a bit wound up. Don't touch my phone. We have the support of prominent Komatua and Iwi leaders, and if we can't tell these stories, how will anyone know what is really happening behind the protocols and behind the closed doors? These stories are near on impossible to report. And we didn't do this yesterday. You guys are causing this. No, but he didn't. No, that's a bit fair. And you're no, making this. No, so you have. But I'll tell you what. You the request is that you go to the commanders of this hospital mm -hmm. and that you ask them whether or not that it's appropriate for us to be here. That's just my request to you because this is a really, very important story. Yeah. If the commanders of the hospital think that it's inappropriate that I'm at the meeting, then I'll be happy to go. But right now I think that I've got a way more important job to do, you know, with what is actually going on with Oranga Hamaruki and the uplifts then to actually take into consideration that a few people from the DHB don't want me to be here. If they say I have to go, then I'll go. And the other so you'll thing, be happy with that? And the other I'll thing be happy with that. So, with that established, it's back now to the pending family group conference. The baby's future hangs in the balance of that outcome, and everyone here knows it's D-Day. The position is that Oranga Tamariki are not willing to change the venue. This is Auckland lawyer David Stone. He's Jean, the midwife's nephew. In Hastings for the day, he's about to take the reins here for the whānau. He's been on the phone to Oranga Tamariki trying to change the meeting venue, which is on in 20 minutes. And they weren't willing to change the time, and if media are going to be there, the meeting won't go ahead. So that's 
conversation. Okay, can I just ask you a question? Are we going to take this entire room of people to another venue or a couple of the Oranga Tamariki workers come here? It just seems illogical, especially considering that we've got a young mother and a baby. Yeah, I agree 100%. So what do you suggest should happen now? Because they're basically saying it's our way or the highway. That's exactly what they're saying. That's exactly what they're saying. Yeah. And, and so what do you a, think? We're in a position where you know, they've made it clear that if we don't abide by those terms, then the, the conference is not going ahead. And if the conference doesn't go ahead, what does that mean? That's a good question. I mean, what does, does it mean? Uh, because I, I think it then means that they write down that Oranga Tamariki organised a Fano conference yeah. and none of the Fano would go. They refused to go because that's what will end up happening. Exactly. Um, and I think that there has to be some people here with her. Uh, I don't want to leave her by herself. Because based on everything that I've heard, uh, uh, I share the same sentiments that your family has. There's a real lack of trust. And that they might uplift the baby, is that how what you say? We, how do we know that's not going to happen? Yeah. We don't. So the Fano travel 10 minutes out of town to a family group conference. The only thing though was that the family group is lacking the mother, the father and the baby itself. David Stone, the lawyer, is going to support the Fano at the meeting. Uh, we need to let them know that um, court documents have been filed and things just have to stop. And that's that really. The issue for the Fano is that those court documents were filed the day before and that hadn't stopped them trying to uplift the baby. But yeah. are they going to lie about it? You know, well, that's like set a, a plan and then change it? Let's go in there and find out, eh? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oranga Tamariki will decide if the baby stays with this Fano or goes to a caregiver of their choosing. Not allowed to attend the Oranga Tamariki meeting, I returned to the hospital to see the mother, baby and Rupeka, the midwife. It was then I found things had stepped up a notch. Hospital security did not allow me back in. When I filmed on my phone, the police were called. You guys are from the media, is it right? Yes, I'm from yearnsroom.co.nz and Okay. Yeah. How can I help you? Um, the hospital staff will have just called us about issues, so I'm just going to go talk to them and find out what the issue is, and I'll have a chat to you. Okay, can, I, right? can, I, can we do it the other way around? Okay. If that's alright. Can yeah, you I'll tell be... me your side of the story and I'll go yeah, talk to them and see okay. well, I think there's been like a sort of dramatic overreaction. Yes. So I explained that earlier I'd told DHB security I would leave the hospital if it's Komatua wanted me to. So I just am slightly um, perplexed by this kind of reaction. Yeah. I'll go see what they've got to say. Okay, cool. And then I'll come back All right, and chat with you. thank you. While I was on the outside, importantly, cameras remained inside the hospital. So they would be there to film any further attempts to uplift the baby. Hello again, Melanie. Hey, um, just having a chat with the staff inside. Um, the issue for them has been that proper protocols has not been followed. There's that word again. And there's, Sorry I, about I, that. I explained to them that you guys have got you're well within your rights to do what you do from out in the public place. Yeah. Um, yeah. They just until the dispute is sorted out between your access to the place, they just said, please don't go back on the property. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Right. Thank no you, problem. Melanie. Appreciate okay, it. Okay. Thank you, guys. The Fano return from the family group conference. The mother's mother was one of many who pleaded their case to Oranga Tamariki, but by now had lost all faith. We don't trust them at all with what they're saying. Um, it had come down to one of two options. Either the baby stays with its mum and goes to the support whare, or the baby is uplifted. Oranga Tamariki caseworkers told the whānau someone higher up the organisation will make that call. But at the moment she's to stay in the hospital um, until the decision is made. So you're no until the decision is made, remember that statement. 
The Fano, the midwives, the mum, the dad believed the mum was staying here tonight and they were to await Oranga Tamariki's decision. It was getting, you know, on. So by the time we left was maybe half past seven, yeah. somewhere around there. I says, come on, you need to go. So everybody left, went home. Mum and baby were left to get some rest. The Fano too needed rest. We headed back. No one predicted what was about to happen. In the dark, mum and baby alone, Oranga Tamariki made its next move. I just received a phone call from Zipika Ormsby. She was stressed, she was crying. Oranga Tamariki have arrived at the hospital. Is that an order there to uplift him? And that is what we're enforcing. No, they're on to your baby. <clears throat> they're trying to oh, make right you give them. baby away. Don't hand your baby over to them. So she's in there with absolutely no support and they're about to take the baby. None, None whatsoever. She's holding the baby. So is in your own room with no support person with her. The Oranga Tamariki, they're sitting in the room with, um, ready to uplift her baby. Her main support, midwife Repeka, has had her swipe card disabled by the DHB and security won't let her in. Distraught, Fano converge at the hospital entrance. They make contact through video calling. How many police are there? Are they in your room with you? No, they're all outside talking because I won't give baby, so they're probably making a plan to take them off me. So I reckon they're not leaving for the baby. Don't you let them out of your arms? And we're out here. We're going to be out here until we get locked up, most probably. All entrances are covered. Where's my grandson? Your grandson's inside. Okay, so there's a, an order there to uplift them, and that is what we're enforcing. The full force of the state is now at play in the power of Oranga Tamariki on full display. That, right here, is. right now. Okay. The family court has decided that the child needs to be uplifted and we just have to do that. I think that this is an absolute travesty, eh? The midwives bring in some high-powered support, respected Komatua Des Ratama. The family clearly understood baby and mum would stay in the hospital tonight and that tomorrow we'd work through the solutions. Only for Oranga Tamariki to turn up here tonight about 8.30 and the cover of darkness covertly moving like little ninjas to uplift baby. They've isolated the family outside, so nobody's allowed inside. Hold in there. We're all here for you, sis. They said they're not going to want to They want me to put baby in the car seat. In the car seat. Mm -hmm. well, just keep on holding, baby dog. Who's in there with you? What's her name? She is the social worker who tried to uplift baby the day before. She's accompanied by Jay Dean, the caseworker, not visible here on the phone camera. The uplift car seat is on the mum's bed where she's being told to place the baby. Don't let him go. And as for the one that's in the room with you, that tamar oranga tamariki lady, don't take her crap. She's just trying to frighten you. This is just a complete fiasco, and the power imbalance is just incredible. Yeah. Yep. She's just sent me a text before saying that oh, they're trying to brainwash me. I could hear her sobbing on on. She was very very upset. She had put the phone on loudspeaker, so I proceeded to talk to the police officer who was there and to the Oranga Tamariki um, caseworker. They were telling her that if only she just gave the baby to them, then she could proceed to have a good sleep um, and the matter would all be resolved and it would all go away. I had just said to them, look, why don't you leave her to sleep? The baby's really very happy with her. We've got the court proceeding. We can sort this all out tomorrow. What is the harm in waiting for another day? 
Um, they refused to do that. And I think that it was at this point, one of the times that they hung up on me. What did your lawyer say? Told them to let my midwife in, but they won't let anyone in. Someone needs to be with you. Are they waiting there till you fall asleep and then they're going to take baby? I don't know. Don't you take any medication? Anything the nurse gives you, don't take it. Next minute you're going to sleep, they're giving you a sleeping table. Don't trust them. I They're coming back. Don't you let him go. I'm trying through the Chief Executive Officer Kevin Snee to try and get entrance in there myself on behalf of the family to ensure that is okay and baby's okay. That didn't happen. We call the police. Who am I speaking to? Inspector Reardon. Are you aware that this is actually before the courts and you will know that the police do not have to carry through and execute that warrant? Okay. Now, the police statement that I'm going to give you is all I'm going to give you. The police are there assisting the Child Welfare Agency and um, we are working uh, to resolve an issue and that's all we will issue until 6.30 tomorrow morning. Okay, okay. But, uh, but what I want to ask you... I've given you what I'm going to say. But your officers have been told that this is before the court. So if that... that okay. Bye-bye. Dears Ratama was also on to the police. I had spoken to the senior police officer. It was to say to him, you would be aware though, that the lawyer or the family has filed an injunction on that order. And so until they hear back from the judge, nothing should happen. The hours tick by, it's late. No one's backing down. The Fano try to keep the mum awake, telling her not to sleep. Still, she clings to her baby. Where's my mum? There's your mum. We're not going anywhere. We just tell them we're not going anywhere. We're going to sit here and if we have to, we'll sleep out here. Right on their doorstep. And that's what they do, moving in with bedding to reception. Others sleep in their cars. At 1.37am, the mum texts her lawyer. She's at breaking point. She says, I still have baby. They're still trying to take him, and I'm getting really tired. Then, finally, a breakthrough. So at about uh, 2 a.m., I get a call from the senior police officer on site to inform me that, that he's got a deal that he'd like to offer to the family. So then the police officer comes out and he says to the family that he has spoken to the regional manager for Oranga Tamariki and that she has agreed that there is no need to proceed with an uplift tonight. She has agreed that no further action will happen and that tomorrow there will be a hui where a plan will be put in place and there we go forward. So, so the family were reassured that there wasn't going to be any betrayal or any sneaky things in the dark. And uh, I just thought that the police did an outstanding job of going above the case manager's head uh, to broker a deal which kept everybody in a good, safe place. How's the baby doing? She's feeling well, she's sleeping well and has been on the away. The young mum is now staying with her baby at the Fuddy. That decision was made during a hui led by Kumatua, attended by Fano, midwives, police, DHB and Oranga Tamariki. A new social worker has been assigned to her case. You must be relieved, are you, after everything that's happened? Yeah, if it wasn't for the, um, my midwife and um, my family and everybody who um, helped, then I probably wouldn't have them. So I wanted to thank everybody for helping me.